Oh, oh, good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. I'm Gianpaolo Pioli. I'm the editor-in-chief of uh, La Voce di New York. And thank you very much for your time and for this interview. We are 10 years old and uh, we are the first digital Italian and English daily newspaper in uh, New York. Uh, and we are very, very honored for, by your recognition. Is it the Italian and Italian-American community important for your administration? If yes, why? It's important for many reasons, not only the historical reasons, the roles the Italian community played in helping us uh, build the infrastructure of this city. When you look at the contribution of what the Italian community uh, has played and will continue to play, uh, the foundation of New York is from the early Italian immigrants who came here to eke out a living and build our small shops uh, the the role the Italian community plays in our legal field, many of our uh, uh, lawyers, many of our judges, uh, and they support the three primary foundations of our city. One, families. Uh, this is a very rich culture around the support of families. A uh, second, business, of uh, the importance of businesses in our community. And third, which is important to me, is public safety. Uh, they believe strongly like I do that this public safety is the prerequisite to our prosperity and we must be safe as a city. And that contribution shows that every day. Refugees, immigration, housing, health system, education, which one become your priority in 2023 and which one is now your real emergency? Well, at the top of the list is uh, public safety. That's at the top of the list for me, uh, that we must make sure we continue our success of public safety, driving down uh, gun crimes. We've made over 9,000, we've confiscated, I should say, over 9,000 guns off our streets. Uh, make sure that we continue to drive down a seven major predatory crime, those dangerous uh, felonies. And then we, the second item that we have to look at, it has really leapfrog over so many important issues that we have. But now the next big important thing is dealing with the asylum seeker migrant uh, crisis. This is could undermine our entire city, the economic challenges of it. And we are really looking for the federal government to do its job of allowing migrants and asylum seekers to work and to assist in funding uh, through the FEMA allocations of dollars to deal with this issue. This is a national issue. This is not a local issue and New York City residents should not have to bear the brunt of it on its own. And, but then you deal with those important issues such as housing uh, to make sure we get housing for all New Yorkers. But if you had to rank it for me, it would be the public safety, the migrant asylum, economic concerns, and housing. Oh, thank you. And the war against rats and the, <laughs> the war against recycling. Do you, do you really think that you can win? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I don't know yeah. if you heard it, but I hate rats, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. I'm scared about that. <laughs> uh, yes, I think we can win. I think we can win on both. Uh, we rolled out a recycling program of dealing with uh, those uh, items, yard waste and other items. We rolled it out in Queens. It was extremely successful. And even in, in, in non-traditional areas, there was a level of success. We're going to now expand it citywide. And we believe we're going to take uh, tons of garbage out of our landfill and now going into uh, using as biodegradable fuel in other areas. And when it comes down to rats, as you know, we hired a rat czar. Her role, uh, uh, is, as we like to call her a czar karate. Uh, her role <laughs> is, to, is to really coordinate the effort on dealing with rodents. And that coordination is going to include uh, being reactive to, to, to deal with some of the rat sightings but to be proactive. And that includes earlier pickup of garbage, uh, putting our garbage in containers, uh, making sure that we use some of the new tests on new devices that we've rolled out 
Uh, we have several new devices that we are testing. We're looking to see the results of those tests so that we can really go after the problem with rodents in our city. And that, that puts you, with, especially with the immigrant uh, refugees, a kind of odd adult with the White House sometimes. That doesn't mean that you don't endorse Biden for the next election, right? No, it doesn't. Uh, you know, uh, friends squabble and friends argue. Uh, I, I, I support the president. And the real issue is that we need to focus on this issue of the migrant crisis. It has nothing to do with the many other things that he has done that I think allows him to, to have another term. But I'm going to point out those areas that I believe they are harmful for New Yorkers. I'm not going to remain silent. And the handling the cost of the migrant asylum seeker issue is a severe financial impact on the city. And are you hopeful that you're going to get more money from FEMA compared with the only 8 million that you got last year? And you need uh, yes. much more? Yes. Uh, we, uh, thanks to Senator Schumer, Congressman Jeffries, and the New York delegation, uh, we were able to uh, get $800 million in the omnibus bill. Uh, now it's time for FEMA to be expeditious uh, to uh, make sure that money get, gets to cities like New York. Uh, we, we have the bulk of the migrant asylum seekers. Uh, we are calling on uh, FEMA to utilize uh, their power. They broke it up into several different pots. The first pot is 300 million. We're hoping we get a substantial amount of that 300 million because we're being impacted the most uh, by this issue. Which, which is the area in New York that suffered the most about the immigrant and influx of uh, refugees? Well, Manhattan, to, to, borough, all over. Where? Uh, to to be to be honest, it's it is clearly all over. Uh, as I stated, uh, the financial crisis of the of the migrant asylum seeker issue is going to impact every delivery, the uh, delivery of service in our city, and it is imperative that we uh, look and examine how we could move this issue forward in the right way, and that really starts with work authorization, but every community has been impacted. If you were to do a mapping, you would see that every community is showing a level of impact from uh, this crisis. The, the American Italian Cancer Foundation is a nonprofit organization which has a special medical bus, uh, bus fully equipped, which travels every week in the five boroughs of low-income people to offer free mammography and starting in June, the, with the same medical bus, we also offer free PSA tests to prevent prostate cancer. So that means that men and women of the same family can go to the same bus at the same time and at no cost and have this uh, preemptive test that saves a lot of lives. Do you think that this kind of philanthropic activity must be encouraged and supported by the city of New York and why? Well, first of all, that takes us back to your original question. Why is the Italian community uh, so important to our city? That is one of the reasons. Uh, when you look at the Italian community and how willing they are to volunteer, to give back, uh, they really believe in the role that we play as citizens to give back in what we do. That bus is amazing. It allows people to do preventive health care, to really have an early detection of a chronic disease. And it is so important. You know, every Wednesday at 9 p.m., I'm on 34th Street between 7th and 8th Avenue uh, to give out food to New Yorkers who have, fall, who have fallen on hard times. This is the type of work that the bus is doing and the Federation is doing uh, that really shows how we could bridge the gap of what government can do, um, private philanthropic entities can do, and organizations. So this is a real win for New Yorkers. If every New Yorker just contribute one hour a week to some form of volunteerism, we will see a drastic turnaround of some of the issues we're facing in the city. Oh, Mr. Mayor, I really appreciate all this answer. And one final question. Are you optimistic about 2023? I'm not asking about 2024, but 2023. Uh, this is my Aaron Judge, judge year. Um, I'm excited about this year and all it has to offer. You know, these are difficult times, but let's be clear. New Yorkers are resilient. 
New Yorkers know how to survive during difficult times. We've had difficult times uh, before. Uh, storms don't last forever. I heard someone say once, uh, no matter how bad the storm is, we get through the storm and sunny days are ahead. And I'm excited to be in a position to make sure that we can navigate through these difficult times. This is the right time to have the right uh, pilot at the helm. And this is the plane that we're going to land together. Okay, Listen, I really, we really appreciate that we are the, the Voice of New York, your comment. And I hope to see you soon, maybe live next time so we can interact uh, without this uh, bumping and sounds uh, due to the uh, freeway and the not perfect coverage of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> of the Wi-Fi around the city and going to Long Island especially. Yes, okay. yes, thank you. Thank you very much.